Hi, my name is Jennifer Wittick. I'm a physical therapist. For those of you who don't know what a physical therapist is or haven't had any experience with physical therapy, what we do is we work with patients who, uh, due to illness or injury, have lost some of their physical functioning. And we work with them through various exercises and activities to help them regain some of those abilities that they've lost. We may work on strengthening with them, balance activities. Uh, we may help to, uh, we may work with them to help them get endurance back. Sometimes these people have lost the ability to walk or even just to be mobile. And we work with them in various ways so that they can be safe in their environment. And our key role is just to help them to be as independent as possible. Now, as caregivers, you're working with patients who um, have been in the same situations and they've been ill or injured and we just want you to know that as caregivers we respect what you do we really um, look at your role as very important and we want you to know that you're a vital link in what we're doing with the patients as well when i'm working in a, a nursing home or a long-term care facility i really like the fact that i can seek out some of the caregivers and get their input uh, there are times when I may be working with a patient maybe just for a half hour, 45 minutes, but you're with, with that patient throughout the day. You spend hours caring for that patient, and your input is very important to me, and it's very important to uh, the goals that I'm trying to reach with that patient. So I just want you to feel comfortable in uh, approaching us if you have questions or concerns with that patient, and uh, we'd like to feel comfortable approaching you as well and just... Um, keeping communication open and working as a team. And uh, that makes our jobs easier for both of us and it's also very beneficial for the patient. With that said, let's move on to the topic of this video which is principles of moving. Now by moving, all I mean is lifting, positioning, transferring patients, and the principles are just the ideas and the considerations behind that that you need to think about before you're actually physically working with the patient. Um, you could think of it somewhat as driving a car. When you're driving a car, you may know how to put the key in the ignition, start the car, work the gas pedal, the brake, um, the blinkers, but there's other things that need to be considered. You need to think about, do you have gas in the tank? Do you have your seatbelt on? Um, is your car going to get you from Wisconsin to Florida or wherever you're going. So there's other considerations to think about and that's the same way we like to think about principles of moving with patients. This will not really be much of a demonstration video, but I will touch on things that will be important for you to keep in mind and things that uh, will be helpful for you when you're out working with these clients. Uh, let's start first with just the importance of activity. Why is activity important? Um, why is moving these patients important? Uh, one main reason is because it's very beneficial, not only physically, but mentally. It's kind of a benefit to the whole person, the whole body. Uh, if we think of just on the very obvious level, functionally, why movement is important, movement helps you get that patient from point A to point B. Um, you can get that patient up where they need to be. So movement is important just um, for a very functional reason. But movement is also important for the health of the patient. And I'll just go through a few of these uh, health reasons and hopefully you'll see that these things are very important and as you look at these reasons, you'll see that it makes a big difference in how this patient is going to function and how easy it's going to be as you, for you as a caregiver to care for this patient. First of all, movement helps to maintain flexibility and coordination. And we all know that when patients uh, lay for a long period of time or in the same position for a long time, they become contracted. That doesn't make your caregiving any easier and it certainly isn't enjoyable for the patient. So movement just helps to maintain flexibility and coordination. It also aids in digestion. Um, just the whole idea that you need to keep moving to keep things moving. So um, get those patients up often. It improves circulation. It increases muscle strength and tone. It improves respiratory function and just uh, helps to prevent them from getting fluid in their lungs. And there are many times that patients who are bed bound or in a lying down position for a long period of time, they end up with pneumonia um, 
or just a lot of fluid in the lungs. And so it's very important to get these patients up for that reason. Along with the idea of digestion, it improves bowel and bladder function. And finally, it really increases mental alertness. If these patients are laying in one position all day, um, same four walls, same position, it gets dull, dull, dull. Uh, their mind becomes dull. And so just getting them into a different position, maybe into a different room by moving them and transferring them, they have a different scenery, and it really helps to stimulate their brain and just makes them a more alert person during the day. That is just some of the examples of the importance of activity and movement. And uh, I think you can see how that really helps to uh, just benefit the patient for their general well-being and for their health. Let's move on to considerations when you're moving a patient. There are things that you'll want to consider physically. Make sure that you always know that patient's diagnosis before you go into work with them. The diagnosis is very important because it will also tell you things about the patient um, as far as how they're functioning. Uh, let's say, for example, if you have a patient you're working with who had a stroke, then you may be thinking, now is this patient going to have balance problems when I sit them up? Will they need me very close by if I try to stand them? Um, generally, with a stroke, they may have a side that's weaker, and that's very important to take into consideration when you're transferring them. If it's a patient who had a hip surgery or a broken hip, uh, that patient may have pain. And then you will need to be thinking ahead, does that patient need a pain pill? Maybe a half hour before I go into their room and try to get them up for the day and get them washed up. Um, it also is important as far as weight-bearing status. If you have a patient who had a, a joint injury, they may have a specific weight-bearing status, which means how much weight they're allowed to put on that leg or that um, joint. So you need to be aware of that before you're transferring a patient. Um, also, things like endurance. Um, if you had a patient who had a heart attack or pneumonia, you might be thinking they may be short of breath, and maybe I should plan ahead if I'm getting this patient up to go from the room to the dining room, is that patient going to need to rest somewhere halfway to that destination? And uh, Am I prepared for that? Will we get halfway there and not have a chair or a bench? So plan ahead by considering the patient's abilities physically before you transfer them. Also, their abilities mentally is important. Uh, you need to know if this patient is alert and if they're cooperative, if they're combative. Um, unfortunately, I have been working with patients who are combative, and I was not aware of it ahead of time. And so we got into a little... Um, tug of war struggle with my hair and that wasn't enjoyable and if I knew that ahead of time I probably would not have leaned so close to that patient when I was transferring them. But that's important to know what kind of a, a general mood that they're going to be in as far as their mental alertness and their cooperation and uh, how oriented they are. If they're going to understand what you're doing or not, um, that doesn't mean you still don't explain to them what you're doing. That doesn't mean you don't um, ask them to help with the transfer, but just be aware that many times that may mean you're going to be doing the brunt of the work. You may not get a lot of follow-through from that patient, and they may not remember what you asked them to do. Another very important thing is to be aware of any 